Hey y'all, I'm Amanda Mertz here in Columbus, Kentucky at O.H. Ingram River Age Whiskey, and this is Crafted. My name is Hank Ingram, and I am the founder of O.H. Ingram River Aged Whiskey. My craft is bringing the river back into the process of making bourbon. Thank you so much for sitting down with me to talk a little bit more about your craft. Go ahead and just start off by telling me what is O.H. Ingram's craft? We are essentially bringing the art of making bourbon back to its roots, mellowed on the Mississippi River. It started in 2015. It took a lot of red tape. This is actually the only floating barrel house in the country. We actually took a barge and converted it into a floating barrel house. It can't actually go down river. It has to stay here in Columbus. We're rocking around. We're encouraging the whiskey to work differently with the barrel. And, and as a result, we make a really complex, flavorful whiskey. What was your inspiration for getting into the whiskey bourbon business? So if, if you look at whiskey and bourbon in particular, uh, heritage and tradition play a large role in, in the making process. My family has been on the river for more than 150 years. Oh, wow. So my great, great, great grandfather was in the lumber business in the, the mid 1850s. He was logging timber and sending it down the river to the sawmills. My great grandfather, also O.H. Ingram, started a barge business in the 1930s to move oil to market. And so now we're 75 years on and uh, I'm just another O.H. Ingram building a business on the river. Well, it turns out that bourbon also is rooted in the river. So uh, if you go back about 200 years, the, uh, the settlers of Kentucky, they had no railroad, but they had the river. And so these farmers would distill their grains down and they'd sell them by the barrel downriver to larger markets. So time spent in the barrel, the sloshing on the river, it changed the way the whiskey and the oak worked together and it made a great product. It became immensely popular once it got down south. As bourbon uh, began to be bottled and they didn't have to send it by barrel anymore, I felt like something had to been lost in the process. And so all we wanted to do was see can we bring the bourbon back to the river and find out what made it so popular in the first place? It took us a couple years to get this whole process permitted because it's, it's not exactly a standard barrel house. And when it was time to load up the, uh, the barge, I had uh, six friends on the first day. I had two left on the second day. And one of those actually was Scott. And Scott could move the barrels around like, uh, like knife through butter. And, uh, and so I said, you know, you might, you might have something in this. Little I know, here we are, gosh, almost four years later, and, and he's our master blender. And can you tell me exactly what whiskey is and what is bourbon? Yeah, so whiskey is a distilled spirit made from grains. Bourbon is uh, a subcategory. So all bourbons are whiskeys, but not all whiskeys are bourbons. So to make a bourbon, you have to be a majority corn in the recipe has to be aged in new charred oak barrels, and you can only make it here in the United States. Those are really the, the key points. So walk me through the process of crafting a bottle of O.H. Ingram. So our bourbon starts out uh, as raw distillate. We have a distillery in Owensboro called Green River that we work with. So they will make it to our recipe, our, our spec, then we'll go pick up the barrels and bring them out here to Columbus. We'll load them up onto the barge and they'll stay basically in this floating rick house for at least four years. We taste it four years old, and then it's Scott's job to uh, figure out how to marry all those barrels together. Does Scott need any help tasting because you can sign me up if so. <laughs> <laughs> So when we're preparing a batch, I'll go through and pull samples, and then from there, take different barrels, blend them together, until we come up with a whiskey that's consistent from a previous batch, but maybe has even improved qualities. Just as we age, our whiskey continues to get better and better. What is the significance of having the barrel houses on the water? So being on the water, we have constant motion, so the whiskey inside of these barrels are constantly moving. So that creates more interaction between whiskey and oak. Uh, we also have uh, you can probably tell it's very humid on the barge yeah. even today. So that accounts for higher moisture, which 
means that over time, we're seeing less angel share loss than you would probably in a rickhouse on land. And then we have huge diurnal shifts. So that's your day and nighttime temperatures. So we'll have sometimes 130 degree days. That same night, the river's cold enough, it might drop 50 degrees on here. So for the swelling and contracting of the barrel, which is another crucial part of the maturation process, it's happening at an accelerated rate and it's created some really awesome whiskeys. We proof everything with purpose, so it's a good cross-section between a sweeter characteristic and high proof. We design everything to be enjoyed neat, and so whatever you're pouring into your glass, whether it's our rye or our bourbon, just know that we've designed that to be enjoyed neat. You can always add ice if you want, I won't judge you, <laughs> but you don't have to. Okay, good to know. What kind of legacy do you want to leave with O.A. Ingram? Well, if you look at the best bourbons in Kentucky, most of them are either family owned or have been run by the same family for generations. And with our name on the bottle, I fully expect that to be the, the case here. I like to say, uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's not a new phrase, but I think it applies. I had uh, several folks tell me why this probably wasn't the best use of my time. There's a million reasons why we shouldn't have started this, but I will say that the people that we get to meet uh, the, the fun times that we have, the places we go, uh, it's all been absolutely worth it. And uh, at, at the end of the day, we have something that we can be proud of. And I put my name on the bottle and we didn't do that lightly. You know, we stand by the product.